and welcome. You're here and we're so glad. I invite you to come on in, find a seat. this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's good to see your smiling faces, whether you're right here or you're out on the World Wide Web. Good morning and welcome. Um, let's start off this morning with our August memory verse. Yes, I said August. It is August. It's flying by. Flying by. All right. Um, maybe we'll see if we can get that projected. Hosea 10:12. There we go. All right, so let's say the reference and then we'll say the verse together. All right, here we go. Hosea 10:12. So righteousness for yourselves. Reap the fruit of unfailing love and break up your unplowed ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. Amen. Think about that. Let that soak in. Amen. Amen. All right. A um, few things I want to highlight in the bulletin. First of all, if you are visiting with us today, um, please tear off this part of the bulletin. Um, write the contact info down and drop it in the offering basket because we'd love to keep in touch with you. Also, if you have a special prayer request, write it down as well. Drop it in the offering basket, and we'll make sure that it gets prayed for. A few things to highlight. Um, you see on the left-hand side many prayer requests in the list. Please um, be in prayer for those folks. Give them a call. Um, cheer them up, whatever you, however you can encourage them, however the Lord leads. Um, this week, we have quilting on Tuesday, Wednesday, prayer at the pavilion, 10.30 a.m., Zoom prayer meeting at 1. Thursday is the Celebrate Recovery, which is a meal day, so it starts at 6. Friday, Allegheny County Prayer. I um, want to mark your calendar. A week from today is when Vacation Bible School will be starting up. And... Uh, um, Josie's not here today, but if you're interested in helping, you could probably come talk to me or something. I'll write it down, get, 
get it to Josie. Um, but uh, you don't have to be a teacher to help out at Vacation Bible School. We have other things that you can do. So um, that's just one week away. And then mark your calendars, August 15th, Communion Sunday. I think I'll let the, everything else there for you to read uh, at your leisure. So um, let's take a moment and uh, quiet our hearts and come before the Lord this morning. with us this morning. Thank you for your presence. Um, we invite you to reveal yourself to us this day, this morning, through the singing and the preaching and the fellowship. Lord, you have a word for us today, and we, uh, we want to receive it. So open us up, break down the walls, um, unplug our ears so that we can hear and receive what you have for us this morning. We pray for those who are not with us, whether they're sick or whether they're traveling, wherever they are. We ask God for you to bless them and encourage them. We give this service to you. We pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I uh, just want to say welcome to our alumni here, right? We have uh, Tim and... Hannah Watson and their children here. We have some wonderful people. Steve and your wife's name is Krista, Krista and your daughter's name Corinne, Corinne uh, from Mennonite Disaster Service. They are uh, blessing us with their presence this morning. So thank you for making the trip to be with us this morning. So without any further ado, we'll do worship. This morning we're going to be singing hymns, so some of them, when Marcy and I were going through them, I thought, wow, boy, it's been a while. So they're so old, they're new again. It's like a new song that's familiar to you. So if you want to look at the notes, it's uh, this first one is 179, I Will Sing of My Redeemer. I invite you to stand.
all the verses? We did, right? Okay. I didn't think so. I lost myself. I will sing of my Redeemer and His heavenly love to me. And He from death to life has brought me, Son of God within to me. Sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer with His blood He purchased me. to whatever it is that you're currently going through and you say thank you thank you so much Lord for caring and knowing and providing this is 428 oh, wonderful Savior is Jesus Oh 
Oh, Father, thank you for speaking your life and your truth to our hearts. Thank you for being our Redeemer. Thank you for being the rock. Thank you for hiding and holding us in your hand. so grateful for you. Very good to see all of you here today, and it's good to open up our hearts to the Lord today in, in worship and response. I trust that God spoke and ministered to your heart as he, as he has mine. This is the time when we receive uh, the offering, and you know, we don't give because we have to. We don't give because somehow God needs your money in order for his kingdom to survive. We give out of a heart of gratitude. We give out of a heart of thanks. As we, uh, I have found, Sharon and I have found over our lifetime that you can never give yourself poor. You can never give so that uh, God always takes care of us. And the more we give out of obedience and faith, the more likely we are to experience God's blessing. And my observation is that God blesses people who give. So bless you as you give here today. God, thank you for this offering and that we have the chance to give here today. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Okay, we received the apple. stand if you would like and we will dedicate this offering to the Lord. Father God, we take now these gifts that represent our time and our effort and we dedicate them to the advancement of your kingdom. And I pray God that there would be a rich blessing 
on each person who has given from their heart. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And let's sing the doxology together. Associate pastors here will be having the message today. God bless you, Sarah. And on the first Sunday, we also have something especially for the children. So I think Sarah's going to invite all the children to come up. Floor, or you can sit up here. If you sit on the floor, I can see your faces. Thanks, Graham. Conrad, they're deep. Why don't you go sit by Graham? No, you're going to sit here? Where's my Conrad? Oh, man. I guess he's grown up. Oh, I'm not ready for this. All right. Good morning. I'm Sarah. Will you pray with me before we start? Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given to us. And I ask that you would speak to our hearts. And Spirit, Holy Spirit, please reveal yourself to us. Just like you did to your followers and the believers in the book of Acts, we ask that you would reveal yourself to us in that same way that we would have a revelation of who you are and who we are walking with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I saw all of you walk up here, right? You all walked. Well, maybe ran. Maybe scampered. <laughs> um, is there any, look, look out there. Is there anybody out there that maybe can't walk yet? See, maybe one. There's one person out there that can't walk yet, I bet. You think everybody else out there can walk? So. Looks like it. Looks like they can all walk. I don't know, Matt, you seem a little unsure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you all remember when you couldn't walk? You can't? I remember when you couldn't walk, Graham. I remember that. There was a day that you couldn't walk. You run really fast now, but one day you couldn't walk. When you were born, could you walk immediately? No. Do you think the adults out there remember when they couldn't walk? Probably not. <laughs> they probably can't remember that either. So what happens when, what does it take to learn how to walk? Practice, absolutely. Good answer. Any other ideas? It takes some help, right? Do you think that a little baby that doesn't know how to walk can just automatically start walking? Like, they woke up one morning and said, today's the day. I'm going to walk. Deke, you didn't even do that. <laughs> so what do we do? Will you be my helper? Will you be my helper? Can we show people how you learn to walk? Come here. Stand up. Come here. Come here. Tinsy, will you help me? Graham, will you help me? Yes. Come on. I need your help. Yes, Graham will help you. Ready? Yes. Ready? We did this. Right? <laughs> You're a great sport. Thank you. <laughs> we learn to walk by holding on, right? Hold 
Now, I've seen Graham helping my children learn how to walk, and he's not, he hadn't been walking a whole lot longer, right? And then we had some grandparents that helped them learn to walk, and they'd been walking a lot longer. And then there's parents who'd been walking longer, but not quite as long, who helped learn how to walk, right? So, Sarah, what on earth does this have to do with church? Well, let me tell you. Today, we're looking at Acts chapter 4, or no, Acts chapter 14. Um, and there's a story about a man who was a man. He wasn't a kid, he wasn't a baby, he wasn't a child, who had never walked since birth. He had never learned to walk. He wasn't able to walk. But he was listening to somebody talk about God. He was listening to Paul talk about how amazing God is and that God loves us and that he came to save us. He was listening intently. And so you know what Paul did? He saw him and thought, that guy has faith. He didn't even know it because of a conversation. He didn't know it because the guy was doing anything other than listening. But Paul, because of the spirit of God in him, recognized faith in that other guy. And he said, stand upright on your feet. And so what did the guy do? He sprang up on his feet. I thought it was funny when I was reading it. Sprang. Sprang. Sprung. Springed. <laughs> He sprang up on his feet and started walking. So nobody had to hold on to his hands and teach him to walk. If, has anybody here broken their ankle or their foot or their leg? You have? So, oh, twice. Oh, you are tough. So did you have to learn how to walk again? With crutches, right? And then you had to put the crutches down and then you had to like realize you had to be brave enough to start walking again, right? This guy had never walked in the first place. So he had to learn all over again. He just had to do it. Just sprang right up and started walking. <laughs> Boom, just like that. So... He was brave. He was, he was faith-filled enough to believe that he would be able to. That's what Paul recognized in him. And God healed him so he could walk. And then he was actually brave enough to obey and to actually do it and to walk. Now, how... There's, there's two things in this story that made me think of walking. Physically walking, how Paul told somebody because of the power of God they could walk, and they did. And, but he was able to do that because Paul knew God. He walked with God. I think of walking, I love walking. I walk best barefoot, if you know me at all. But I'm trying to walk with a little bit of a heel. It's like an inch. <laughs> but the best thing to do, here, sit down, it's not time for tag, um, is to walk with God. And when you walk with God, do you think he knows how to walk? Mm -hmm. He does. Do you think he will help show you how to walk? Will he give you the strength to keep walking? But what about if we learn to walk, like when you broke your foot or your leg, and then you just decided, I'm not going to walk anymore, even though your head knows how to walk. But you're like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to. Would that, what, what would that be? Would that be crazy, silly, <laughs> foolish, nonsense? It would be. So how many of us has God taught how to walk with him, but we decide, yeah, I'm not going to walk with him. I'd rather just, you know, do my own thing.
sing and not walk with him. That's nonsense. It's foolish because he's given us the opportunity to walk with him and get to see amazing things. So we have to choose to be persistent enough to walk with him, brave enough to walk with him, faith-filled enough to walk with him. So you may all walk back to your seats, and you can keep listening. Okay? You want to go sit with Daddy? You want me to walk you back? Come on, let's walk. We're looking at, we've made it all the way to chapter 14, you guys. This is amazing. And I thought it was funny because the last time I was preaching, well, when, I, when we started in Acts, the first message I did out of Acts was about Peter and John right. went to pray and they met a lame man on the way, you know? And then I was reading chapter 14 and I thought, huh. God must be trying to teach me some things here. It's another story. So I was curious. I didn't go through, but I kept looking for different stories throughout Scripture that God, there's like a theme. There's a couple in here of people, like the disciples often, like Jesus went around healing people, right? And the disciples got to go and heal people. Because of the power of God in them. And they, there's like a theme. They teach, they like pray for people or speak to people or declare to people to walk. And what do they do? They learn, they walk. And it's not like they like hobble along and maybe I'll make it. They like spring up and leap and dance and jump or they sprang up <laughs> and walked. And I loved that concept because of, like, two things. Partly the physical aspect of it, the miraculous, which is incredible, of them being so filled with faith that Paul was so aware of who God is and what he's doing that he recognized the faith from God in somebody's face that they were able to say, Stand up. And so the guy just stood up and started walking. Like, that's amazing. I want to be like that. I want to be so in tune with who God is and my walk with him that when he wants to touch somebody, I get to be a first hand, I get to be right there. And that's what God has for all of us. It's what he has for all of us. Acts chapter 14. Paul and Barnabas are on a journey. <laughs> they, um, I'll just read a little bit. And then we'll talk about it some more. Now at Iconium... They entered together into the Jewish synagogue and spoke in a way, in such a way, that a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers, so they remained for a long time, speaking boldly for the Lord, who bore witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands." 
But the people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. When an attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to mistreat them and to stone them, they learned of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia. And I looked up how to say it. I do much better with the Hebrew words than the Greek words, so we're calling it Lyconia today. And to the surrounding country, and there they continued to preach the gospel. So Paul and Barnabas went to the Jewish synagogue. Now there was a couple things that stood out to me. They went to a Jewish synagogue, which they were Jewish. They had, you know, they were welcomed in a Jewish synagogue. But it was interesting to me that there were Jews and Greeks there listening. So they're speaking, and they were so, their words, it says they were so persuasive. They, or they spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed. So they spoke words of the good news, the gospel. They preached the gospel. And the, both the Jews and the Greeks believed it. Like they, they got it. Which is remarkable because it's the Jews and the Greeks were coming from Yes, they were living in the same area, and so some of their cultural nuances like mixed, so they could grasp different things, but they, it was two different groups of people who kept themselves in a lot of ways very separate. And when they spoke the good news, when Paul and Barnabas started speaking about the love of God and the power of God and the grace of God, they believed it. They heard it. It reached their hearts and their minds. And they, they grasped it. And because Paul and Barnabas were speaking boldly for the Lord, they weren't up there speaking and saying, you need Jews, you need to start acting like the Greeks, and Greeks, you need to start acting like the Jews, or you all need to start acting like this, you have to start doing this. No, they started talking, they were talking about God and who God was, and because of that, they were speaking boldly for the Lord. The Lord bore witness to the word of his grace. So as they're talking about the grace of God, God said, God was like, hey, this is this is my my um, <laughs> my understanding of this. Was they they're speaking for the Lord, and the Lord is like, yeah, that's it. That's right. I'm going to confirm what they are saying. And he did that, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. So it wasn't simply Paul and Barnabas started talking, and they were like telling a good story. They were, but they were doing it in such a way that brought all of the glory to God. So, the, so God was like, hey, I want to work through you even more than just your words. And signs and wonders were being done. There were miracles happening, which is rather outrageous and incredible. And then... Some... Jews came, some of, the, some of the Jews said, wait a minute, we don't like this. We don't like what he's saying. We don't like what's happening. This is disorderly. This is not what we want. We don't, mm, this, is, this, is, this is changing our routine. So, the people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. When an attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to mistreat them and to stone them, they learned of it and fled to Lystra and Derby. So, how many of us, if we were sitting in our church service, 
and somebody got up and started talking about the love of God and the grace of God and the power of God, and suddenly people started getting healed, and people who couldn't walk were standing up and walking, and strange, unusual things were happening. What would we do? Would we say, wow, God, this is amazing? Or would we say, um, problem, this isn't okay. Let's stone them. I mean, really. <laughs> like, or maybe we won't stone them with actual rocks. Because our rocks are a little on the small side outside. Maybe we'll just stone them with our words. And try to destroy their reputation. And um, when Paul and Barnabas heard that they were going to be mistreated and stoned, they got out of there. Fair. I would probably do the same thing. Um, but they chose to walk with God. They had learned to walk with God. So, did they just say, hey, okay, this is a little dangerous, let's go home? They didn't. They said, hey, let's keep going. So they kept traveling, and they went to the next place, and they kept preaching and to, to other cities and the surrounding country. And there they continued to preach the gospel. They didn't stop just because people were going to mistreat them, or people were going to stone them. Now, I want to remind you, before Paul was Paul, he was a man named Saul. And what is the story that we know about Paul before he was Paul? He stoned people. Well, he encouraged people. He helped people out. He held their coats while they stoned Stephen, right? So Paul knows what happens when you get stoned. Stephen died. So here's Paul. It would probably felt like, oh, Lord, this is kind of coming full circle. This is, this is what I did to somebody else. And now they're going to try to do it to me. But you know what? He didn't be like, well, I deserve this. Let them stone me so I can die too because that's, you know, what happened to Stephen. No, he didn't do that. He knew that he had a call from God to go and travel and tell the, the good news. So he didn't get on a guilt trip and think, I need, I deserve to die. They should kill me. No. He was like, no, God's called me to do something, so let's keep doing what he's called me to do. So... He went to the next place and preached the good news. At Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking. And Paul, looking intently at him and seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking. And when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowds. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd, crying out, Men, why are you doing these things? We are also men of like nature with you, and we bring you good news, that you should turn from these vain things to a living God. So here they were in one place, and they were going to be mistreated and stoned. And then they go to the next place, and another miracle happens, and everybody says, instead of being like, stone him, they say, whoa, he must be a god. <laughs> and they're like, hello, that's a little like, over here we're being like, 
about to be assassinated, and over here, we're, they're trying to worship Paul. They were getting ready to make sacrifices. The priests were trying to make sacrifices. They were trying to worship Paul and Barnabas because they thought that Paul and Barnabas were their little G gods. Like the, the gods that were worshipped in that region. They thought, oh, well, here, like, here we go. And Paul and Barnabas were like, no, 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 wait, stop. Please. I mean, they were tearing their clothes. They were working really hard to get this point across. We are people just like you. But we have good news. And what the good news was, was that Jesus, who was the son of the living God. If you go back to Matthew chapter um, 16, verse 16. The apostle, or Peter, Jesus says to Peter, who do you think I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says to him, you know this not because you just walk with me. You know this because the spirit of God revealed it to you. And he did, Peter knew it because he walked with him, but sometimes he forgot it. Even though he walked with Jesus, he needed the Spirit of God to reveal to him, to give him a revelation of who God actually is, who Jesus actually was. So that it reached more than just his head, but it reached his heart. So here, Paul and Barnabas are saying, wait, we have good news. Jesus came. He is God. He is the son of the living God. And he came to earth as a man. Not Zeus and Hermes that we look like people but aren't really people. Jesus was really a person. He was God. Because God created people, he could be a people. Okay? So Paul and Barnabas are explaining to them, no, no. Really, we are not gods. We have the good news of who God is. And then they start talking about the living God. And I love this passage. You should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways. Yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with, good and with food and gladness. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the people from offering sacrifice to them. So here Paul and Barnabas were in one city, and they were at risk of being stoned. They go to the next city, and there is the risk of being worshipped. Now, the Jews from Antioch and Iconium, having persuaded the crowds, so some of the some people. Jews showed up and were like, hold on. Because they were like, the Jews from over here came over here and said, wait a minute, this isn't okay. And so they started persuading the people that what Paul and Barnabas were doing was wrong. So they persuaded the crowds. And guess what? They stoned Paul. And dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. So he went from the risk of being stoned to being worshipped to being 
actually stoned. And they dragged his body outside the city because they didn't want dead bodies in the city, dragged him outside, and left him there. So the disciples gathered around him, and he rose up and entered the city. So he must, I am inspired by his courage and his conviction that God had called him to do something. Because here he was, when there was just the risk, he left. Then when he was actually stoned, he didn't get up out of belligerence and stubbornness and, well, I'm going to show them. No, he got up. And entered the city. He went back to the same place he got just he just got dragged out of, thinking he was dead. And so then the next day, they got up and they went to the next city. He didn't give up. He kept going. He kept doing the thing that God had called him to do. He and Barnabas, Paul and Barnabas, went to Derby. When they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. And when they had appointed elders for them in every church, with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. So these men went through a lot, right? But they didn't give up. And they actually went right back to the places that people hated them, where people maligned them, where people said horrible things about them to convince other people to kill them. And they went there to encourage people in their faith, to encourage the, to encourage the believers, and to let them know that, yeah, we go through hard times. We're going to go through hard times. It's going to happen. When a child learns to walk, it's not like that, right? I mean, it wasn't for my children. They bumped their heads, they tripped and fell. But what would they do? They would get up and they would keep walking. I would help them up. I would hug them and kiss them and let them know that they were okay. And then I would help them keep walking. Right? Those are hard things for little people. When you fall down and get hurt, it's a hard thing. When we, as adults, as human beings, fall down, it's a hard thing. When there are things that are um, attacking us, whether it's somebody's words or their actions or thoughts or fears or anxieties, when those things attack us, those are tribulations. Those are struggles. Paul and Barnabas didn't say, forget it, I'm done walking, I'm done traveling, I'm done doing what God has called me to do, because this is really hard. They didn't do that. We're not supposed to do that either. They knew it was hard. They recognized that it was hard. So they went to other believers and said, 
There's going to be tribulations. But you know what? They didn't say, well, this person did this to me, and this person did this to me, and I was doing the right thing, and they still mistreated me. That's not what they did. They said, you're going to have struggles. You're going to have tribulations. You're going to have people not like you. You're going to have people attack you. But God is going to help you walk with him the way he's called you to walk. Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. And when they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. And from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had fulfilled. And when they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. And they remained no little time with the disciples. So Paul and Barnabas went to the very city where it was the Jews from Antioch that came to the other places that stirred up trouble and said, hey, let's get these guys. Like they were the ones who were after Paul and Barnabas. So Paul and Barnabas went to the city that was like the main place of danger. Like, these were the people that were after them. These were the people that were cruel to them, that were trying to kill them. And that's where they chose to go and not to, like, stand up to them and say, you're wrong, you're, like, blah, blah, blah. They went because they were commended to go there because of the grace of God. Because God had imparted his grace to them for that place. For the work that they had fulfilled. And when they had arrived and gathered the church to go together, they declared all that God had done with them. And how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. So when they got the believers together... They didn't sit there and be like, listen, you need to, like, we really need your encouragement and your support because this has happened and we need you to agree with us that we should, like, retaliate. Right? Is that what they, that's not what they did. They got the believers together to say, this is what God has done. They, he healed this person and this person and this person and he set this person free and you would never believe it. God has opened the door for us to share the good news with the Gentiles. So it wasn't just we got to do this with the Jews. I mean, it was like he, they, they just declared the good things that God did. I would like to be better at that. And just declare the good things that God did instead of the things that the enemy or the life throws at you. Because sometimes it's easier to get caught up in the hardships than to remember who it is that's walking with us, who's teaching us to walk with. That's not ignoring the hardships, because the hardships are there. The tribulations are there. We know it, we can recognize it. But let's Declare who God is. Let's remember who God is. The son of the living God. That made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. That made us and has called us according to his grace. To do amazing, miraculous, wonderful things in us and through us. Paul and Barnabas also, there's an, in verse 23, and it says, And when they had appointed elders for them in every church, with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. This shows how important prayer and fasting is. 
This isn't something that you can say, oh, well, Paul and Barnabas, they were apostles. I'm not an apostle. <laughs> Guess what? Paul and Barnabas were human beings made in the image of God that God had called to do something, to share the good news. And that is something that every single one of us as believers are called to as well. We are called to share the good news of the gospel, the love of the living God, the power of the living God, the miraculous, the unknown, the wild, the crazy, the love of God. So I would like to encourage you. I would like to encourage all of us, myself included. To walk with God. To be like Paul that is so in union with God that when he sees somebody filled with faith, he can call out the best in them. And to not be like those who showed up in the synagogue or showed up in the church or showed up in the community and decided that they needed to be stoned because things didn't look the way they always had. Let's be like Paul and Barnabas, who carry the good news of the gospel, even to the most treacherous and dangerous of places. And as we do that, we can learn to walk ourselves and help others walk who haven't been walking as long, or maybe have been walking as long and just need a helping hand. So I'm going to close with, some, with prayer. And I encourage you to just search your hearts. Who are you in this story? Who do you want to be in this story? Who is God calling you to be? And after I'm finished praying and Joanna does a closing song, the altar is open for prayer. Or you can find another believer that can encourage you and pray with you. Let's quiet our hearts. Father God, you are the living God. We thank you for making us, for making the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. And Lord, we ask that you, by your Holy Spirit's power, would reach our hearts and our minds that, Lord, where conviction is needed, you would embrace us with your kindness. Where faith is needed, you would grow it. Lord, that you would impart your grace to us. And that we would go boldly into the lives that you've called us to. Sharing the good news of who you are. And Lord, we pray for healing for so many people that are dear to us. 
Continue to pour out your comfort, your grace, and your healing in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for Nathaniel, that you would bring him comfort and healing after losing his dog. And you would give him a deep revelation of your love for him. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders. We ask blessing on them. That they would lead with truth and righteousness and justice. And that you, Lord, would be exalted in this nation and this world. That you would encourage the church worldwide by your spirit. Lord, I pray a special blessing on everyone here. That we would know the deep love you have for us and would walk in the grace that you give, sharing boldly who you are. In Jesus' name. Jesus is